Hi, I'm Marcus Huskins here on behalf of Acon Digital, and I'm a creative freelance professional with over two decades experience working in both the music industry and audio post-production. Today we're going to talk about the release of Acoustica 7.7, which introduces ARA support for Pro Tools version 2024.10 and later. So this new deeper integration enables a much faster workflow, which we're going to dive into. And as you'll see, there is no longer any need to round trip audio between the two applications, which is a huge time saver. Audio Random Access or ARA is a plugin technology that simplifies complex audio production tasks, allowing you to use Acoustica as though it was part of your DAW. Now today, our focus is going to be Pro Tools, but it's worth mentioning that ARA works pretty much the same regardless of which ARA compatible DAW you're using. So let's go over a few quick points with respect to working with Acoustica, ARA, and Pro Tools. First things first, as you'll notice over here, I've got two different clips on this timeline. If I wanted to apply Acoustica to only one of these clips, I would right click, choose the Acoustica option, and then choose edit. In addition to that, if I wanted to get rid of anything, all I have to do is click up here, and then we can click the option to choose none. Now, if you have a bunch of different clips on your timeline and you wanna have Acoustica available across all the different clips on the track, then we can actually choose Acoustica from this menu over here, and then it will be available on both clips. And as we choose these different clips, we can cycle between these different ones. Also worth mentioning that notice my cursor is actually following wherever I click in either the Pro Tools timeline, or I can click up top here in Acoustica. This is going to follow in these different sections. So that's something worth noting. If you wanted to close the ARA editor, I can just click the Acoustica tab. Also worth mentioning that if you have Acoustica applied to multiple different tracks. If you take note here at the bottom left, as you select these different tracks, this is a real quick and easy way to be able to see which waveform that you're looking at. Now we also have a couple different views that we can work with. For the most part, the waveform is very useful view, but when it comes to analyzing noise and looking for things like thumps or any noises that need to be removed, we have another option to choose the spectrogram. And this gives us a completely different view. Now when looking at a spectrogram, this can be really, really useful to see this in a more zoomed in way, in which case we have the ability to pop the ARA editor out and then we have much more visible feedback in terms of what we're looking for. But if we wanted to redock this, we can simply click this little icon, this will redock it, and then once again, just clicking Acoustica, this will close that window. Now when working on music production or mixing in general, it's a really good step to get your track sounding as clean as possible as the very first stage or the very first step with respect to music production. In some cases, you might not have any choice in terms of what the recorded material is. That's what you have to work with. Let's take a listen to this lead vocal example over here. In fact, let's just zoom this into view and let's have a quick listen in solo. Think of times we've shared Those precious memories And keep them close Okay, so we got a few issues here that we need to take care of. First of all, we hear a thump that happens right over here, where maybe the performer accidentally bumped a mic stand. Those precious men. So we need to take care of that with spectral editing. And the other thing you'll hear is just across the board, we have some noise in the background. Think of times we've shared. So there can be a lot of different reasons for this. Maybe this was preamp noise, or maybe this was just a general room tone in which the recorded performance was captured. Either way, let's go ahead and use Acoustica to take care of this. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I just want to be working with this lead vocal. I'm going to select this clip. Let's right click, let's choose Acoustica and the edit option. This by default is opening this up in a waveform view. We do have more information that's really useful to us though if we choose the spectrogram view. You can see that we have the ability to analyze this signal and I can see where there's breaths and even that low mic thump that we have, I can see that that's right over here. Those precious men. Now, if you need to go full screen, we can do that just by simply popping this out. This can be helpful if you really need to get in there and see a lot of details. That being said, I'm gonna redock this just at the bottom here. And I can tell just by looking at this, I don't even have to play this, that this section over here, that's a really clean noise profile. So I'm gonna head over to enhancement and let's analyze this noise. So now this has grabbed a perfect noise profile. We can now select everything and I can actually addition this. Think of times we've shared. And we can unbypass here. Those precious memories. And keep them close. 
Okay, now this is quite aggressive. We don't have to go this far. So maybe what we'll do is we'll dial this in perfectly. Think of times we've shared. Those precious memories. We can also make this dynamic. So if we want the noise profile to move with the performance, we can choose the dynamic option. Think of times we've shared. Those precious memories. Let's pull this down a little bit more and let's say that I'm happy with that and I'm going to go ahead and process this. So now this has automatically been cleaned up, we can instantly see that. Now the next thing I wanna tackle is this thump over here. Those precious memories. I'm going to temporarily pop this out. Let's go full screen for a moment. We're still in the spectrogram mode. I'm gonna zoom in just so I got a little bit more room to work with. And there's a couple different ways in which we can do this. We could choose the brush and we could actually just paint over this, or we could choose the magic wand selection and basically just click this. And this is automatically made a selection. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna choose the volume option and let's choose volume. And here I can just basically set an amount here. So if I wanted to attenuate this by somewhere around 50 dB, first of all, let's start off with it bypassed. That's the sound. And then if I take this out of bypass, okay, we can barely hear that. So now with these settings, I'm just going to process this. So now I can actually redock this. And if I close Acoustica, now if I play back this vocal, we should have a much cleaner performance we can use as a starting point. Think of times we've shared Those precious memories And keep them close and then the very last step would be if I wanted to, I could actually render this and commit to these changes. That being said, this is happening in real time. And if at any point in time we wanted to open this up and go back, we have some undo steps that we could do if we needed to undo some of our processing. So that's very, very useful. Let's also take a really quick look at working with another track. I'm gonna select this clip, we'll right click and choose the option to edit with Acoustica. And in this example, we have something slightly different. You can hear we've got a ton of different clicks over here. I'm going to go to enhancement and let's choose the de-click option. Now using presets as a starting point is a really viable option. So let's go into vinyl. And first of all, in terms of what we're hearing, I'm definitely hearing clicks. I'm not really hearing any thumps, but I'm hearing crackle and I'm hearing clicks. Now I'm going to start off with this basic preset. And then if we click play, this will apply that processing. Okay, so that's not bad. I am hearing some artifacts. One really useful thing that we can do is we can also solo the noise so that we're not over-processing. So let's play again, but this time let's solo the noise. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna to try to refine these settings over here so that I can quickly make some adjustments. I don't want it pulling out as much of the harmonic content. I'm gonna solo the noise and let this play and let's make some adjustments. Let's see that in context. As a reminder of where we started. Okay, let's say that I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead with these settings and I'm going to process this. And now you can see that those clicks are gone. And then if I wanted to actually commit to this, we could just choose the option to render this. And now this has been committed on the track level. Let's also take a look at a guitar example too. In this case, we have an issue which is pretty common, a hum or buzz coming from a guitar amplifier. Let's take a look at how we can use Acoustica to take care of this issue. In this next example, let's take a look at this electric guitar track. Okay, so we definitely have some noise. We need to take care of this. Now, whether this is a hum or a buzz or a noise profile, super easy to take care of this because this is definitely not something you wanna have up front and center in your mix. Again, we have the option here of how we want to handle this. I technically have two clips. So at that point, I could actually choose the option to instantiate Acoustica from the track level, at which point I would be able to process both of these, which might be the better approach or the better idea here.
Now, the first thing I'm going to do is let's actually hop over to the spectral mode. In this case, we could also pop this out. And now here, I'm just looking for some clean tone in terms of some room tone. I think we can grab something from the very front section over here. I'm actually going to redock this. And let's just make a highlighted selection. And we're going to go to the enhancement section. We are going to analyze this noise. This is the noise profile that's given us. And now I can just select everything and we can addition this in real time. Let's back off of the noise reduction and dial it in just to taste. Now we can bypass in and out as we're playing this simply by clicking this option. And we can also solo the noise while we're playing. We can make adjustments here. And we can also enable dynamic if we want to. Let's come out of the solo mode and let's take a listen to our before and after. So we'll start with it bypassed. And let's bring it in. Now, as soon as I'm happy, I'm just going to go ahead and process these settings. And now this has been applied. And then we could do the same thing with this other clip. And at that point, we can make a decision as to whether we want to actually render these settings or leave them in line. Because maybe I've dialed this in, but I've been too aggressive. It's very easy for me to just undo this and I can bring myself a step back and redo my settings at a later point. But if I'm doing any editing on my timeline from within the DAW, I don't have to worry about losing that connection with ARA. So that's using Acoustica ARA mode in Pro Tools 2024.10 and later. I'm Marcus Huskins, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.